Pilot is going to meet us here and we're going to load. Um, they're going to send a truck over. We're going to weigh uh, so we have a precise weight estimate. The good news is we're pretty light. We just have the four passengers each with about 25 kilos of kit. Plus maybe the drills another 20 kilos. It's, it's quite a light load. And they'll just, all the extra available um, payload will be fuel so that they can divert um, to other airports. And so they always find that balance between maxing the fuel for the given uh, payload. Because there's a practical reason for that optimism because if we hadn't packed, when the opportunity came, we wouldn't be ready. So it is important to keep the faith. Agreed. <laughs> you knew it the whole time. Oh, the whole time. 100%. I knew we were going to get on the issue today. It's Jason, isn't it? He like, exudes this competence. When Jason's in charge, you think it's going to come together somehow. I don't know how, but it will. Gotten a shot of me looking less than up. Yes, this morning. <laughs> hey, let's recreate that. Yeah. <laughs> or just staring at my cup of coffee. And that, like, that not was, not, not that was, making eye contact. That was the pose, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We realized this morning that we were about to fly to a place where the, the, the snow pit that we would have dug would be too deep, that we wouldn't have time to dig down all the way that we needed. And that's the realization that forced us to uh, divert north above this um, mountain range to get to a, a, the precipitation shadow. And we dig there half, you know, a third of the depth, still get the same kind of information. With time running out to collect the samples needed, our success required a quickly improvised trip up the rugged coast of southwest Greenland, stopping in the tiny settlement of Manitsuk to refuel. We're heading to the topographic divide of the southern ice sheet, um, and it's kind of shaped like a saddle. Um, and you have, you know, we're on the western slope of the ice sheet. We, we go right to that that crest, and it's actually kind of flat there. And that's where we have a weather station. We're going to core there for the fire layer and the melt layer of 2012. We had much further to go that day, with miles of uninhabited rocky coast and the world's longest fjord still ahead of us. Just a few weeks later, on July 30th, Manietsuk recorded the warmest temperatures measured in Greenland since records began in 1958.